All right, here we go. Question number seven from our college algebra homework number six in my lab math. Find the inverse of the given one to one function. Look at that. It says that it's one to one. So th this time they don't ask me to check and see if it's one to one. They actually tell me it's one to one. It says give the domain and the range of f and f inverse and graph both of them in the same set of axes. Wow. All right. So that's a lot of stuff. First of all, look what it says. It says the inverse function is. So the first thing I'm going to need to do is find the inverse, and we're going to do that up here in this window. Using the 3S method, substitute, switch, and solve. So the first thing I want to do is I want to substitute for f of x. I'm going to replace it with y. The second S is switch. So that means that every Y becomes X and every X becomes Y. That is the switch step. And did you notice that every X becomes Y? And now for the third S, we need to solve for Y. So if you notice how many Y's are there, there are two many y's. There's too many y's. I'm going to have to get this down to one y. And the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to take this x and I'm going to f it up. I'm going to fraction it up so that I can cross multiply. Because that turns this into a proportion, I can cross multiply. So we're going to have x times y minus 7 equals 1 times anything is itself, so 1 times y plus 3 is just y plus 3. And then I, again, remember I'm trying to solve for y. So I want to go ahead and distribute the x. That's going to give me xy minus 7x equals y plus 3. I needed to get rid of those parentheses so that I can move my terms around. So if I'm going to solve for y, I need to get every term that has a y on the same side. So this y needs to come over so that he can get with this term. The negative 7x does not have a y, so he wants to move this way. All right, so what is that going to give me? I'm going to have xy. This is going to become minus y. The negative 7x becomes positive 7x and I have my plus 3. Now, notice that I now have two terms on the left that both have a Y, and I can use the six-letter F word. You're right, that is factor. I'm going to factor out the Y, and that's going to leave me X minus 1, and I am all but done. The last step Remember, to get y by itself, we need to divide both sides by x minus 1. And now we can say that we have the inverse function. Now that we have y by itself, this is now the inverse of f of x is 7x plus 3 divided by x minus 1. That should be the inverse function, and I'm going to use Desmos down here uh, to check it. Okay, so the first thing, notice that I've already put in the original function. Now for g of x, I'm going to use g of x for my inverse function. The numerator is 7x plus 3 over x minus 1. And if we change that color to something we can see a little bit better, maybe red, that looks good. Do you see the symmetry? Remember that a function and its inverse have to be symmetric about the line y equals x. And that <laughs> was red. That needs to be a different color. Let's make him black. So again, do you see that if I zoom in a little bit, do you see the symmetry there? That this black line, y equals x, cuts uh, the blue and the red right down the middle. It's not, you've got to almost tilt your head sideways to see the, the symmetry that it cuts it right down the middle. So that means that this g of x is the correct inverse function. 
inputting that into my lab math, we've got 7x plus 3, <coughs> excuse me, over x minus 1. And now what does it want? It wants us to find the domain of f. So if I go back to the original function, <clears throat> which was f of x equals x plus 3 over x minus 7, we know that a rational function has a restriction. The denominator cannot be 0. So if I move the 7 over, that says x cannot be 7. And so the domain, noticing that it wants the domain in interval notation, is going to be everything from negative infinity up to 7, and then everything from 7 to infinity. This is the way that you write the domain, showing that you're going to leave out 7 and include everything else. So there's the domain of f. Everything from negative infinity up to 7. Remember, we use a parenthesis that says 7 is not included. And then we skip over to the other side of 7 and keep going all the way to infinity. And then it wants the domain of f inverse. So then if I scroll down to our inverse function, the inverse function is also a rational function, and the restriction is that the denominator cannot be 0. And so here the restriction is x cannot be 1. So if I'm going to write that domain in interval notation, that's going to be everything from negative infinity up to 1. Skip over 1 and keep going. Everything from minus infinity to infinity, excluding 1. And so let's see if that is correct. Negative infinity to 1. And don't forget the U. The U is the glue that sticks the two pieces together. Damn. Okay. The range of F. Okay, so it also wants the range. And so here's where you get a cool fun fact about functions and their inverses, okay? The domain of F turns out to be the range of F inverse. And the range of F is the domain of F inverse. And this is always the case, okay? So if I want the range of the original, that's going to be the same as the domain of the inverse. Negative infinity to 1, skip over, 1 to infinity. And the range of the inverse is the domain of the original. So that's going to be negative infinity up to 7. And then everything from 7 to infinity. All right, so once again, the <clears throat> if I could scroll back up. The domain of the original is the range of the inverse. And the range of the original is the domain of the inverse. That is a true statement. And now it says choose the correct graph for f and f inverse. I already have that in Desmos over here. Uh, noticing that my windows that I have to choose from go from negative 30 to 30. I'm going to reset my window in Desmos. Negative 30 to 30. And negative 30 to 30. And then which one of these graphs looks the same? <laughs> this is funny. Only one of these graphs shows the line y equals x being a line of symmetry. Notice this dotted line doesn't cut these in half, doesn't cut these in half, doesn't cut these in half. The D 
is the only graph that shows uh, the symmetry correct. And so it has to be D. And so I hope that was helpful. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them in the comment section below, or you can text me. And thanks for watching.